Okay, we're about underway now and just about to get ahead with the uh, first match in this series, Team Adolfo versus Universal Fighters. First match is going to be in the under 60 kilogram division, that is Breno Peterson versus Tamiv Magomedbek. Back in the commentary chair with me to call the rest of the matches this evening is my boy BMAC. How's it going, Brandon? Feeling good, baby. Ready to rock and roll. This should be very exciting. If Universal comes out here with the same strategy that they had in their first matchup, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, and recap, us, uh, recap for us what that was. Like, we saw them earlier okay. against Al Leone. Uh, they had one match yesterday against Nurmagomedov, but a different a different look from them tonight. Just looked like a totally different team than yesterday. Yesterday we saw a lot of, I, I guess I'll just say timidity, right? Today... I would call it cautiousness, but go Okay. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call any of these badass <laughs> Dagestanis timid. <laughs> Today, when they came out in their first matchup, they came out with a really smart strategy which was we're going to come out aggressive. We're going to look to put two points on the board during this wrestling scoring period in the first two minutes and make sure that we get ahead in all of these matchups. And then they just started dominating after that. Once they got that aggressive play, that aggressive style of play, they look like a whole different squad. If they can come out here today in this matchup with Modolfo and come out and take the lead early, I think it's going to be a totally different, a totally different thing. It's not going to be just a walkover like it, like people are thinking. No, we got a series of competitive matchups on our hands right here, and starting us off in the red, Universal Fighters, Timiv Magomedbek in the green, representing Modolfo as Breno Peterson. And check of, it out. Uh, yeah, of uh, Modolfo and Breno, both his ankles taped heavily up. taped. Yeah, I mean that could be though. Only one is hurt. Because that happens sometimes. You don't want to show right. everybody which one is hurt, so you take up both. That's right. And word on the street is one of them is pretty hurt. Right. Here's a shot. Man, it'd be a big statement if Universal can get on the board with a win early. Brando coming in with a hard collar tie there. He's got that square stance, leaving himself wide open to a blast double. I find it curious, actually. I mean, we saw it a lot in the, the last go-around of Team Nur Magomedov versus uh, Al Leone. Team Nur Magomedov taking that one 4-3. But uh, the Al Leone guys did not waste much time in, in sitting quickly to uh, negate that, that strategy of scoring a quick two. Thought we may see something similar here, but actually quite the opposite. And Breno was like that yesterday in his opening match, you know? He was like wrestling with Gary Tang. He was going at it. But then it took it out of him in the later rounds. Michael Bedbeck has made a couple of shots from the outside. Breno's done a good job of keeping his hips back. It's a better entry here. See if he can lock these hands. He's got the two underhooks. Breno trying to get the hips in. Jumps back on the front headlock. But that shot, you, you could have called this earlier as well, but break it down for us because that shot isn't, it's not like he's trying to finish that takedown. What is it? He's just trying to make contact and begin the wrestling exchange. During the first matchup with Universal, they would just, they would, you know, I would almost call them like sloppy or bad shots from the outside, not much setup. but as soon as they get contact, they're looking to create a wrestling exchange and make the second movement, and that's where they were making their scores. It's when they really wrestle. Yeah, very curious, but very effective. And we see it again there, the kind of the shot, Ooh. and he's thrown by. Under the back, strong rear body lock here. Got him down to a hip. Breno's trying to make uh, make a base, but ooh, that neck is uh, looking dangerously exposed. Tamiv is going high. Could have a head and arm here, but they're gonna run out of space, I feel. But he does take that 2-0 lead, and here we go, Universal coming out, getting all the first shot, and taking the lead 2-0. Kind of a three-quarter mount right here as well. He is all over him, he was following the movement of his opponent and Breno was doing his best to try and find a way out and there was just nothing. Gabriel Souza very vocal in the corner of Team Modolfo, shouting instructions out to his fighters. Reset happens in the three-quarter mount. Let's see if Breno can get back to his guard. Does get over to a corner. 
goes belly down, and he's going to get out of there without giving up the pass. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather just give up two than give up five. <laughs> Brano wins kind of this open, kind of sloppy knee shields. It wasn't really an active reverse Dallaheva there. But I like oh, the oh, oh, threw it up. Turns into a double unders, though. Dangerous back exposure there. He saves it again, barely saves it with this quarter guard. Yeah, that is not a great spot to be, but that's better, kind of fighting onto his side here. But this pressure from Tami, he looks, even for this weight class of 60 kilos, he looks, it's just a little under 135 in pounds, and he looks strong. Yeah, he looks, he looks to be a, a much larger fighter, actually. I wonder how much weight he cut to make that weight. And he cut that weight on Friday. He, they weighed in on Friday. Huge point. Two days later, what does he weigh? Nowhere near 60 kilos, I'm sure. Forcing the double under. Not quite clear of the guard, stuffing that knee through, trying oh. to jump around to the back. Oh, that was a nice sequence right there. No pass points. Gotta be careful, we're gonna get locked up in this head and arm. Oh, oh. this is very reminiscent of what Dante Leon did just last week. But he's going to get Oh, he's gonna finish that, that's a lot of squeezing power. He's oh, got the chance. Universal jumps up one to zero, right off the bat on Madolfo. A rear naked choke over the jaw. Huge pressure going through that jaw right there. Brando Peterson, no choice but to tap out. A little over four minutes of the first round. Strong start for Universal. Strong start, powerful squeeze. Once he got his arm around the neck, really just around the bottom of the face, it was all murder from that point. Brano forced to tap out. You know, Breno, he did his best. He put up a pretty decent effort of defense throughout most of that match, but that was, man, that was one-sided. To me, he came out with an intensity and an intention, and he really, he really took it to Peterson. And he, you know, he did most of his work after that two-minute period. Look at that squeeze. Wow. Oh, that was a very good technique. Yeah, you see not just the squeeze, but the kind of the compression. You see the elbow kind of coming down to the chest look how, like that. And look how deep he got with that reinforcing arm. Use that gift wrap to set in the back and kept the gift wrap, kept the wrist control until he got his right arm in position. Oh, Man, look you at know that. What? That is murder. The guys from Dagestan, they don't need the neck. They'll just choke over the jaw. And it's no. just, a, just as effective. Wow. Very, very uh, dominant win there in a... An important win, I feel, for Universal Fighters to, to start off this seven-match series with, uh, with a win. Yeah, that's big. Now, an Andy One Plus Kilograms, representing Universal Fighters, Abdullayev, Gaji Mora, Abdullayev Ruzman. If Universal Fighters can find a way to win this matchup, this team matchup, it changes everything. If, Madol if Madolfo wins, and let's be honest, they are the favorites to win. If they win, then it's going to be Madolfo advancing to the semifinals in December. And also it's going to be Team Nurmagomedov advancing. Because they've had, the, Nurmagomedov's had the best record of all the teams that are left. But it all hangs on the results of this match. Well, this team match, this not team this particular series. match. Yeah. Grip yeah. And I tell you what, Ruslan Abdullayev, he's got more than his hands full with the big South African fighting out a new wave, Luke Griffith. ADCC trials winner in Poland, qualified for the 2022 World Championships, a daily training partner of Gordon Ryan, Giancarlo Bardoni, Nicholas Marigali, and everybody else there in the new wave training room. And uh, a very young man, still a brown belt, but uh, definitely a, a budding star and somebody who has shown great potential. And he was totally dominant the first time that we wow. saw him yesterday. This is a little different though. He had a distinct size advantage over uh, Kaya Rudolph in his, uh, in his match yesterday. Early shot. Yeah. Turn him to the back on Luke. Oh, got the elevation. Luke rolls through. He's, he's, got, oh, he's got the leg. He's looking for it. Does not exactly have the knee line. 
but he may be able to save it. Abdullayev is doing his best to bail out of this position. And he does. Work. And back to the feet, Abdullayev. Oh, wow. Abdullayev is not going to roll over and die for the face. Luke Griffith. That's a lot of energy expenditure for two big, big guys. And Luke gets the contact and pulls guard, and he's going to save the potential two points. I think he felt the the potential of being scored on right there. I mean, that was very close. It was. I mean, he showed really, really good base in uh, in defending oh, that. Oh, look at this. Luke sliding in now. Oh, we Getting into the outside, in Ashi. Here's Catches the outside the knee heel. Line. Loses the knee line. Can he find the adjustments? And look oh, at Abdullayev wow. refusing the big man, Luke Griffin. Hey, this isn't as easy as we were thinking. Another but. good entry. Oh man, Abdullayev, I think he's made a mistake by leaving his leg hanging out this time. Straight ankle lock grip. Luke just really using that to try to advance his positioning right now. Oh, nice job. Gets the split. Check out how he uses that left foot to there it kick is again. out. Now sliding into this reverse X position. I think we may see him use this to set up the uh, inside Ashi on the other leg. We saw Cole Abadi do exactly that yesterday. Abdullaya showing great composure and nice job maneuvering through the leg lock attempts of Luke Griffith. Great base, really, really solid base. Awareness of all the attacks. He's had an answer for them so far. And we're gonna see Luke get into the close guard. He's gonna try to get into his pinch headlock series maybe try to slide into a shoulder crunch. I think that's kind of smart, actually. Let's slow things down a second. You know, these are two big boys to be going hard like this early in the first round of a potential three-round match. Yeah, let's slow it down. And also, I tried this, and this didn't play out. Maybe he's going to be a little weaker over here. And you said pinch headlocks. He's going for that shoulder crunch, pinch headlock kind of upper body attack. And, and he's got the, the butterfly hook in on the opposite side. That's going to create a pretty good sweeping opportunity. Using right his feet the on the hips to try to get some extension. Clears it, here comes the shoulder crunch. And again, Abdullayev refusing. Body lock. Luke fighting with the overhook. He's gonna try this Suma Gaishi, try to get him off balance, but Abdullayev doing a good job keeping his hips back. Starting to create a pass. Oh, I kinda saw an arm hanging out there. Luke was going high for an omoplata, but it was too loose. Giancarlo Bodoni, team captain of Team Modolfo, is actually in the corner uh, calling out the, the tips and advice yeah, for you, Luke Griffith. You heard him calling for the knee lever. He wants to see him use that half guard to create a bit of an off balance. I think that's smart. It's absolutely smart. It, it, it's One quite of the most obvious, simple but underrated techniques in all of grappling. One of my favorite. But Ruslan has dealt well with the direct attacks. And I think that Giancarlo has probably sensed, you know what, Luke, you kind of need to go for the second or third attack in the chain here. And here we go, tries the cross Ashi entry. Again, Abdullayev denies him. Oh, and he passes the goal! He passes the goal to Luke Griffin! A minute to go, and he takes the lead on the big man. That's 3-0 for Universal Fighters in this match so far. Ruslan Abdullayev up on the scoreboard. Really strong control. Got the arm wrapped around the torso. And Luke taking some big, deep breaths out there. That's affecting the breathing. That grip around, all the way around the back like that and make it difficult. He's oh, really covering smothering. the mouth. Taking he's it. lying on the diaphragm and he's putting the face, the hand on the face to get the smother. He's cooking him. Like good barbecue, how he's cooking him slow and low, baby. Abdullayev slowing things down here, and I think that's smart, you know? Key lock, really, kind of trying to get some separation on that elbow away from the ball. Oh body. my goodness, is he going to isolate for that Americana? Luke has got to be careful. He's got a real gamer on his hands here. Yes, he does. We're about 10 seconds out from the end of this round. And, and he's just creating suffering and discomfort right now. That's the end of okay. the first period. So that is a uh, that's a very interesting turn. Huge statement. Huge statement by Abdullayev. He goes back into the corner. And this Universal Fighters team showing why they're the champions coming out of season one. Returning champions. 
And Luke, seated, taking instructions from Dante and Giancarlo over in the corner. Isaac Michelle. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> I was just looking, I'm looking right at him. <laughs> yeah, there's a replay of the uh, of the pass and settling down into the uh, into the top. Oh, yeah, you can see right there the the pressure, the, the, the arm wrap all the way around the kind of the torso. And he was lying on the diaphragm, he was smothering him. Yeah, Ab Abdullah was like, yeah, I got you, I'm just gonna make you suffer. And you gotta wonder, what does that do psychologically? For Luke Griffith, look at the body language on Griffith. He's kind of cross-legged, a little slumped, and you can kind of see him like, okay, that didn't go what I was thinking. And psychologically, what does that do for Abdullah? Oh yeah. Look, this guy's beatable. Yeah. I can beat this guy. Especially if I don't have to sub him, if I just have to outscore him. Interesting, Luke wastes no time in sitting. And they give him a negative. Time. They said it was not Dude. enough contact. And Luke starts off down one right away. I don't think Luke's going to be playing the points game, though. That's that's probably the, the case here. He's going to be looking for solid attacking positions. And, and he wants to play with his butterflies, looking to create these off balances. Those attacking positions, are, they're, not, they're just not there right now. Abdullah is very, very solid. Luke's foot is caught in the shorts there. And he, oh, now he tried to use his other foot to kick it off, and he got his foot caught even worse. Tries the arm drag off the knee shield. There's the off balance. Luke inverting. He's created the exposure. That's better. Still a little loose. Not quite there. Neon starting to slip. Abdullah showing that he is no stranger to the leg entanglements, and he refuses Luke Griffith once more. Interesting that Luke didn't chase him up. He, he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to play that wrestling game. I'm not going to chase after you. Luke with a nice butterfly hook on the inside. And I've just been told, believe it or not, Brandon, that Abdullah have had an MMA fight three days ago that he won by submission. What kind of submission? Do we know? Really the choke. Okay. He's gonna, hey, he's gonna pass the guard of Griffith again. He's got the knees smashed totally together. If he can take that right knee and slide it into the knee elbow space of Luke Griffith, he's gonna step all the way into the mount. But it's 15 seconds until the point, so don't. If, it, if I'm him, I don't want to make that move just yet. No, not yet. Take his time before getting those uh, all important pass points. He's watching the clock. He's literally watching the clock. And and I think now he, he's going to pass. Now he's going to work. There he it passes is. again. Boom. Right on time. 3-0. That was really clever. Perfect strategy. You heard his corner screaming out for him. Take your time, wait until the points are there, and then let's take it from this guy. Huge. Very, very intelligent strategy. I gotta say, I'm really impressed in this match so far. And now, man, this is huge too. Not only is he up 3-0, but Luke also has a negative, so Luke's gonna have to score twice on this guy to get from losing this round. And if he doesn't score twice, he's gonna lose this matchup unless he can find a sub in round three. Right. He's got, to, he's got number one, he's got to find a way out of this awful, awful north-south. You can see Ruslan, he's got a little bit of belly there, and he's using it to good effect. You know, he was going for the smother from north-south. That's a horrible position. Oh, look at that. Heavy, heavy. I mean, I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure that Luke Griffith has been in really horrible smothered positions before, training with Big Dan, training with Gordon Ryan. But in an intense match like this, the thing is, Luke is always dangerous, man. So you can't, if you're Ruslan Abdullayev, you cannot sit back and rely on the fact that you're ahead. You also can't sit back and just hang out here because he'll get hit with a stalling call if he doesn't try and improve his position. But he can get hit with four stalling calls before it's tied. Yes, he can. And my, oh, wow. Another one? He's going to pass him again. Another one. Settles down. And he's going to have hey, another no. opportunity here. Is he going to submit the new wave product in Luke Griffin? The head underneath the tricep. Far elbow is exposed and away from the torso, but now it's back in. Abdullah wasn't going to risk it. He wasn't going to leave that position. 6-0.
and a, an activity call against Abdullayev now as well. The referee wants to see him work from here, from this top position. Well, he's got 45 seconds, and he can afford seven of He can eat it. Yeah, he can eat those penalties like Kainan Dwadi in the ADCC finals. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what he's planning to do. And that's a listen, man, that's exactly what I would be telling him to do if I was in his corner right now. Eat 30 seconds of rest right here. Take a couple of stalling calls, no big. And then let's go in in round three. Oh, interesting. You just see him talking to his corner as he's coming back. It's, that's a look like, yeah, don't worry, I got this. This is actually one of the more surprising results for me. Probably not for those more familiar with Ruslan Abdullayev, you know, considering his pedigree as a, as a grappling champion, as an MMA fighter, uh, definitely one of the strongest representatives of Universal Fighters. But as we said earlier, you know, on paper, everybody considering Team Modolfo to be the favorites. Everybody thinks Griffith, it's just gonna be a walk. But yeah, I'm, absolutely I'm, not. But Luke Griffith, who was one of the, even though he's a young, a youngster and up and comer, kind of one of the heavy hitters, right? De I mean, no question. No pun intended on the heavy hitters either. But he doesn't look like the heavy hitter right now. Here's the corner of the Universal yeah, Fighters. Let's get a look into the psychology of these guys here. We're going to yeah. see a replay. Oh, the most the... impressive part is just that Abdullayev navigating the leg lock so, so well, clearing the knee line, following the rotation, not panicking. Exactly. You know, the defense was correct. The defense was well-timed. Look at those heavy breaths there from oh, Griffith. Yeah. That's a lot of weight on top of you. I mean, Luke has to sub in this round. There's the pass. He timed it so well. He's literally, as the seconds were counting down to the three-minute mark, where, uh, you know, three minutes remaining when the points kick in, and he pulled the trigger on 301. This Abdullayev drawing the energy from this Almaty crowd. Yeah, the psychology totally different. Look at this. Stone-faced and yet Round playing three. up to the crowd is Ruslan Abdullayev. Luke Griffith is like taking deep breaths and he's like, oh man. And he pulls guard. I think that, vi that very first exchange on the feet sent a message to Luke and set the tone for the match. I think it was the leg lock escapes. I think that Griffiths was like, yeah, don't worry, I knew I wasn't gonna win the wrestling, but I, at least I thought I would just take him out with a leg lock. And Abdullayev has shown great awareness in each and every attack. And I think Luke's like, man, that's not the game plan. I thought I was gonna get that. Abdullayev, check out how he keeps his left hand glued to the ankle so that whatever Luke does try to do, he's gonna to have to free his ankle to make it happen. Abdullayev keeping a safe distance. He knows that all he has to do is not get submitted here. He can lose on points. It doesn't even matter. Oh, here comes that shoulder crunch. Nothing. It's difficult this deep in the match when they're sweaty, right? And when Luke, oh my God, he just got absolutely dominated on that pass. Ruslan, uh, man, this isn't There's even no about points, points anymore. It doesn't matter. It's just about dominance and control. He's beating, him up. He's, he's beating him up. And I want you to take a look at the body language of Giancarlo in the corner. He just sat back, totally exasperated by what he sees. There's definitely a little bit of resignation in the uh, Team Adolfo corner here. And a lot of concern. They're all on their feet over there. Yeah, yeah. A lot of worried looks on their faces. This puts them down two to zero. Well, I, I shouldn't give it away so quickly. Luke is still got the possibility to win this match. Still got three minutes. He's going to have to recover and then get to a spot that he hasn't been able to get any offense off in and, and then finish once he gets there. Okay, so points are active. And Luke, Luke, do you want to try to buggy choke? Buggy! No, nothing happening. Does recover to his guard, though. Use the good use of the buggy choke to try to get back to his guard. And Luke's gonna need to create these off balance. I'd be lying far back with his hips, basically a sprawl against the butterfly guard. And he's gonna uh, pass it again. Not yet. But good movement though. I love the way it was just a little hip switch and a skip and he was nearly passed. Ruslan reading those movements really well, just uh, cause it's not even like a super technical guard passing, like establish control, get your grips, like work your way through. 
and he's pretty quick with it. Approaching the two minute mark. Luke Griffith, if he's gonna win this one, he's gonna have to dig. Look at how heavy Abdullayev's hips are. Oh, he does make an entry. Nothing. Luke needs to chase him here. He needs to get after him. He was too slow in coming up. Yeah, but he's got to out-wrestle him here. That's not easy. I don't know if he's going to be able to break him down from this position. Maybe he can. This he is not get bad. Him down to the turtle. Now snatches up that single over the top. Luke trying to make a move around to the back. This could be bad. This is better for Griffith here. Yes, it is. Oh, could he get the truck? Using the heel drag. Digging deep into the toolbox here, puts him into the truck. This is not a good spot for Abdulayev, but it's not a really great attacking position yet for Luke Griffith. He still needs to adjust. Yeah. Abdulayev could, could find a way out. And Luke has to bail on it. Abdulayev. Oh, exposure. Abdulayev, really good movement there. And, and calm in a bad position. That was a really good recovery. And did you see that? The camera zoomed in on Abdulayev and he gave a little wink. <laughs> Dude, I like it. Just the right amount of sass. Luke going to the close guard. This is not going to get the job done, I can tell you that. 50 seconds it's left. Definitely not. Luke needs to get back to his butterflies and start using those to create some off balances and some elevations. Because even though Ruslan passed the guard earlier in this match, didn't count for points because we weren't in that period, he doesn't even need to score. And Luke hanging onto this shoulder crunch, and, and that's a great attack, but not while you're in the closed guard. Right. Even if you get the isolation that you want, right. bring the arm around to the other side of the shoulder, you need those at least one of those butterfly hooks to start creating some movements. Yep. He's gonna get hit with a stalling call here, and he absolutely does not care about that. We got less than 20 seconds remaining in this match. Ruslan is happy to just chill out right here because victory is secure. It's another one in the bag for Universal Fighters, making it 2-0 against Team Adolfo. Holy cow, what a huge upset. Ruslan Abdullayev. Yeah, it was a minus, it was a negative point against Ruslan, meaning that Luke won that round. Oh, oh, see now Luke yesterday oh. did the, that very gesture after winning by submission against Alioni. And uh, Ruslan Abdullayev is like, yeah, you know what? I'm the real killer here. Universal Fighters now leads two to zero. What a turn of events. And this thing just got real exciting. The drama. I love it. I love the drama. And look at the, oh wow, the corner of Universal Fighters. They are so happy with that win. And just the amount of belief that puts into the rest of the team. Right. Yeah, that was a big, big win, big statement. And now we come up into the 83 kilogram division, but oh, just the, the best moments from this match really looked like this from start to finish. Just Ruslan absolutely smothering Griffith from so many positions, wet blanket style. The only good moments in the match belong to Abdullayev. You know, Luke did get a couple of decent leg lock entries. But there was never any danger of the leg actual, you know, the submission. It was just the, the position was there, but Ruslan was out. Oh yeah, you can see the breathing, wow. A lot of pressure. Incredible. This is when Ruslan in the second round hopped over onto the mountain right as they called the points. Just dominating the guard of Luke Griffith. Second guard pass in the second round. Oh, here is the... <laughs> Abdullayev. That one's going to get clipped for the gram. And now, 83 kilograms, representing Universal Fighters, Adilov Abdul Jalil. Abdul Jalil coming back. Saw him in action yesterday. Actually, lost his match by technical submission, if you remember, Brandon. He was the guy who got his foot caught in the rash guard. Yes was uh very controversial coach him. was very upset yeah yeah they, they were not happy about that but let's see if that's a factor coming into this match if that injury is lingering at any point you know 24 hours, 24 hours later and a little roster change here for um for team adolfo dante leon stepping up to 83 kilograms replacing isaac michelle who we've been told is um maybe a little banged up from his two matches yesterday 
Dante did compete uh, under 76 yesterday, but he's coming up to 83. And Dante's an ice cold killer. He's got that Canadian ice water in his veins, right? He does. Round one. All right, here we go in the red. Adelov in the green, Dante Leon sitting early. Dante Ooh, a good very good guard player. Adelov. Yes, it was, but Dante able to save that. And you know, Dante can really can do it all. You know, that is yeah, a absolutely. very interesting thing. He is uh, Canadian, but has been based in the Midwest for many, many years. Training in Ohio has access to some of the best wrestlers the Midwest has to offer has uh, made great advantage of that, you know, training with some very, very good wrestlers. He, he can definitely hang there, but great guard game, great submission attacks, top and bottom, very well-rounded. And I want you to just notice something, how the intensity of the grip exchanges. Mm. Every time that Dante goes, check that out. Every time that Dante goes to set a grip, Adilov just exploding and refusing. Again, if it's not my grips, then we're not going to have any grips at all. That's the mentality of these guys. There's no feeling out here, right? They've no. gone straight at it and they've locked horns and it's extremely tense. Dante, no stranger to competition at the absolute highest levels of grappling. Bronze medal at the 2022 ADCC World Championships, probably one of his biggest accolades, of course, a Nogi World Champion as well. IBJJF World Nogi Championships. Dante taking a two-on-one grip on the hand. And tries to sit under and met immediately with a cross face. Dante now looking to work a waiter sweep, trying to get into his deep sweep half. Out the back, onto a leg. One thing I want to mention as well is just, you know, Dante going out 83, not a big deal because, as we mentioned yesterday, he's competed as low as 155, as high as 185. Look at this head pressure. Bad intention behind that. So even if there is any kind of size advantage here for Adelov, Dante can handle it. He's absolutely. He's well used to going up against guys who are physically bigger than him. But pound for pound, Dante Leon is considered one of the strongest guys in all of grappling. If you've ever seen his powerlifting videos, it'll tell you a lot. A student of the West Side Barbell kind of system of lifting. Louis Simmons and the, the greats there. Adelov is really insisting on passing to that same side and he's very, very intense with it. And they're going to start the stalling clock wow. on Adilov on the top. Yeah, for taking a half second breather after a pass attempt. That's and I think they've already shook the stalling off. Yeah. But just a reminder that he's got to keep that action going. Dante looking to dig this left side underhook while he's playing the knee shield. Now with the frame. Two on one grip. As we approach the two minute mark, the first round of matchup number three. Dante not really able to find any purchase so far. There's just nothing. There's just no openings here. There's nothing to hold on to. Well, there's no, he's not winning the gripping. Right. And that was very similar in pretty much all the matches that we've seen earlier, especially in the Alioni versus. Uh, Team Nurmagomedov, it was very, very similar. The guys were playing from bottom. They just could not hold on to anything. And I've, I've got to wonder if Adilov can keep this pace. Right. Though, is Dante notoriously which is an infinite gas tank? I'm sure Adilov is extremely well conditioned, but you're right. It's a high pace to maintain. Yeah, and he's doing, he's carrying most of the load and the work right now. Dante now using that knee shield to kick through into the underhooks. Bales on it just did not feel like he could do the dominant work that he needed to do. Dante trying to invert through. That's nice, catches and the second oh, angle. Does not get the sweep though. That was smart. Had that, what he wanted for just a second. He came up, you could see that kind of he considered chasing after him, but he was so close to the edge of the mat, he's like, I'm not gonna waste the energy. He sat back down. And it shows you that he's still got confidence in his guard play right here. Like, that even though Adilov is putting a lot of pressure on him and playing very aggressively, that Dante doesn't necessarily feel that he's gonna get past, right. that he's gonna find an opportunity there. And he's looking to dig that underhook again, try to turn it into a shoulder crunch. Adilov weaving those feet 
in and out of the guard. Saw a little attempt at a windshield wiper from top on uh, from Adolov there to try and step over that bottom leg, but Dante's got a very sticky hook there. This match is going to go 0-0. Zero, zero. We've got about 10 seconds left, and honestly, as a judge, I, mean, I don't see the match as a judge. I see it as a commentator. It's not the same thing. But from my perspective, very difficult match to call, very even. But did, Ad did Adelov really have Dante in any danger there? No. No. And Dante was the only one who had an attempt at coming up and off balancing his opponent and initiating any kind of real attack, as we see right here. That but, was more than really yeah. just just no gain though from the attack by Dante. No. If anything, Adilov showing that, you know, I don't care if this guy inverts and tries to go underneath him, he's not going to get anywhere with it. That was the time that he caught the second ankle and you saw Dante briefly consider coming up and chasing after him, but he was so close to the edge of the mat, he's like, ah. A lot of pressure on Dante right here. A lot of pressure. If he doesn't win this match, Madolfo goes down three to zero. And then it's just Universal needing to find one more. And it's, yeah, yeah. Three in a row would be a bad, bad look. Happened in the last matchup though. Aleone went up three to zero, three quick leg locks, and then ended up losing four in a row. Dante choosing to pull the guard and then try to play the guard one more time. Okay, I think we're going to see a similar, similar kind look, of strategy here from both guys. I think it's going to really similar, yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, maybe Dante's, he feels like, okay, you know, I actually I got my openings, I can do this. I'm going to keep at it. Certainly Adelov hasn't really made any solid, solid attempts at passing For just sure. yet. For sure, Dante's showing that his guard pretty much unpassable. And he's tried to snatch up that shoulder crunch a couple of times off of the double unders position. Ooh, Dante tried to get into an overhook game there, maybe thinking about going to his butterfly guard. Just constantly with this quarter guard pressure from the top though for Abilov. Dante looking to scoop underneath the leg with his right hand, instantly gets framed out. Uh oh, oh here's a scoop grip. Yeah. This could be trouble here. Dante gaining a little ground now. I think Adilov overcommitted with that Lost entry the right there. And again, Adilov just shaking out and refusing. I like that as well that he bails, but he doesn't dance around. He's like, boom, palm strike to Dante's head, straight back in. Yeah, he's just refusing the attacks. He's not really disengaging. Yeah. Yeah, there's a difference. There's, there is a there's big difference. Big, big difference in disengaging and, and taking a breather and trying to hang out out there. Don't worry about the ref he's, he's not shying away from, from getting hands on with Dante, that's for sure. And now we're on to the point. Big moments right here for Team Modolfo and for Universal Fighters. This match right here in the middle could prove to be the deciding factor, depending on how the rest of it plays out. Dante into the overhook, and again, denied. Dante gonna invert now. That's Can not he bad. come up on top? That's not bad. He's got his butt to the mat finally. Ooh, and he's got a good grip. He's got a really good grip on the back of the... Oh no, he's lost, lost it again. Oof. Dante not really looking frustrated though. It's no. not, not the same thing we saw out of the Luke Griffith match. Very true. No, no, Dante's patient for sure. And you know, he's not gonna get disheartened by the fact that, uh, that Adolov has managed to find a way out from those, uh, those entries. Howell, I gotta ask, 
do you think Modolfo underestimated these guys? Do you think do you think they just expected to come and walk through them? Oh, here's a good entry. Oh, Joy Bar. Oh, 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 out of nowhere with the huge arm lock. Dante Leo with a submission win here in our Martin County stand. Incredible movement is the Joy Bar. Throws the leg. Into position, exposes the arm. And the winner, Dante Leon. And sinks the first submission the and first win for Team Modolfo. And that is a huge win. Adilov just constantly denied, denied, denied the attacks of Dante Leon. But all he needed was one shot. Huge. That was a. Uh... That was hard fought, and you were asking me, just as that kind of happens, do you think that Team Modolfo underestimated Universal Fighters? No, but I feel that Universal Fighters saved something in the tank for this match against the Modolfo squad. Look but at the this entry, entry. The entry and the finish, look how high his hips were off the mats Full as well. Full extension, man. That was, a, that was gonna be a broken arm. Oh, oh wow. wow. Perfect positioning with the thumb. Absolutely ruthless finish from Dante Leon. Look at this. Oh my God, what a finish. Yeah, and hyped up for sure. Man, Dante's got to be and one now, of the most fun guys to watch. 65 kilograms with score two for Universal Fighters, one for Team Adolfo. Representing Universal Fighters, Shabanov, Magomed. And here comes Shakbanov. And let me tell you something, this guy looked like a destroyer in his first match up today. And he's gonna be taking on Zach. Zach, mixed results yesterday. Had a loss, and then had a dominant 25 Fastest second submission win. of the event, yeah. But you're right. Shabanov against Yonakura earlier, just really, really, really tough. And for Team Adolfo, Zach, and this is going to be a very, very contrasting style matchup. Shakbanov going to look to come out, get on top early. He's going to want to score early, but we're definitely going to see Zach come out, make contact, and get to his guard in every round that we see him in. He is not yeah. going to try to wrestle with this guy. And Zach, very dangerous leg locker, as we saw ye yesterday. The, the real question is going to be that can he much like Luke and much like Dante, can he kind of survive that intensity? Can he Round can he hang one. out? Can he find the opening? Because Luke wasn't able to. Took Dante a while. Can can Zach, does he have the endurance to kind of you know, fight an extremely resilient Universal Fighters member like Shakmanov? Zach's gonna try to get to his guard, use his open guard to get underneath and maybe create a back exposure or a leg exposure. Shakmanov throwing feints early. He's doing it from the outside. He's not letting Zach make contact. You see that? Yeah, very He smart. doesn't want Zach to hit contact and get straight to his guard. And when the shot comes, believe me, it's gonna come fast and aggressive. And now Zach returning the favor. Not, not intimidated at all. No, I see see Zach has do. to get up off that. That was no contact. Oh, they're gonna but... negative him. Yeah, he basically barely, barely glanced his head, you know. Uh, wasn't really an effective grip. And I think that was, I think that was exactly what Shakmanov was trying to do. Yeah. Trying to get him to pull. Effectively, it, get, it gives him a score. It puts him up 1-0 effectively. Look at the flexibility on Zach Kaina. Curious kind of grip there, but it's an intensity. Look at that. It's... They've all been like this, you know, all of the Universal Fighters guys. If you sit in front of them in, in seated guard, they will palm strike your head back because they want you, like, flat on your back. And they want to intimidate you. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Oh, that's interesting, tried that from Kaina. Tried to wrestle up, grab the head for just a split second. Hey, if it's there, why not, right? 20 seconds to the points period. 
Check out how Zach, that's the second time we've seen him do that. He brings his foot around and weaves it to the opposite shoulder to, to stop the forward motion of Shotmanov. That is a curious kind of uh, position to hang out in, but, but I'm sure he's got a reason for it. When it was time to hang out, though, he brings it over to the same shoulder the, again. Zach showing tremendous dexterity with his feet. Trying to expose the home clock here. Part, uh, that's not bad. And that's that could turn into a triangle. That posture that Shakbanov is showing is a good grip. Check out how Zach's got the grip over the top of the forearm into the elbow. I wouldn't be if surprised Shotbanov, to see. Sorry, go ahead. If Shakbanov continues to maintain posture and he even squares up just a little bit, Zach's going to throw a quick triangle at him and try to sub him. That's exactly what I was thinking. I don't think he wants the Omoplata because it's, especially Nogi, sometimes he's gonna rip it can out. be hard. Yeah, he's going to rip out, bail, roll. But that I could expose he, the leg, though. Very true. He's got a triple threat, really, right? But I think that uh, kind of, you're right. I was thinking it's maybe even asking him, baiting him to kind of square back up for the triangle. But Shakpanov is doing a good job of keeping his head low. He's going to try to duck out the other side of this thing. Possible, but risky. If he stays low like he's doing, though, hips on the ground, he could definitely slip through it. Nice adjustment there from, triangle. Uh, from Zach. Zach's going to have a very dangerous triangle, and now he's starting to use this reverse body lock in conjunction with the omoplata. He's going to try to create a leg exposure here. Minute 25 to go. Interesting that we haven't seen Zach use this position to try and off-balance Shachmanov yet. He hasn't tried to sweep him, and I think that that would just be a really risky move. It's a, it's a testament to the balance and the base mm -hmm. of the universal fighter Shachmanov. And you, you you initiate a roll, those guys are so fast and so good in the scramble, you're probably going to lose hold of them. Yeah, and you know, this is maybe as good of a position as Zach's going to see in this round. He doesn't want to take a risk at moving to the Alma Plata. He is now moving towards the Alma Plata. Especially given Shakmanov's that we are, not gonna roll, though. We're, just over, ooh, we're just over four minutes into the first period, you know. An attack like this would be really difficult later in the match when they're super sweaty, you know. There's maybe still enough friction to be able to do this. The spats definitely help. Zach's starting to create the actual pressure on the shoulder here. That's good work. Shakmanov refusing to roll out. And so it's, it's offering the traditional omoplata, something you never see. In, I mean, I wouldn't say never, but never really see Inoki. Extremely rare. Put a lot of pressure on that shoulder. Shakmanov keeping the hands locked together. 15 seconds to go now. If he can survive this attack, he's going to walk into round two up 1-0. I think he's going to make it. One Survives. zero. Yeah, so Shakmanov hanging out in the Omoplata for a good two, two and a half minutes there, but takes that one due to the negative. Risky, risky play to open the round by Kaina. He, tr he just tried to rush to his guard too quickly. Just, just a split second too quickly, yeah. Consulting with his AOJ teammate over there, Cole Abate. Cole, what have I got to do to move this guy to create an off balance? That's a really good point. I mean, having such an advantageous attack position as that, that's about as good an Oma Plata attacking position as you can ask for. And he could not budge him. He was very, very strong, very difficult. I mean, wow, he even slammed kind of Zach on his neck right there. I think he maybe took it on his shoulders, but. Well, you know, I think a lot of times in jiu-jitsu, we're used to the reaction of people trying to roll out of that alma plata or try, or try to just square up and rip out. Square up and rip out exposes the leg, roll exposes the leg, or potential two. sweep. And that is not the reaction that Shakmanov gave him. He comes from a totally different style, a totally yeah. different mentality. And Zach just close, but no cigar. Back to the fainting game. And it worked out. It played out for Shakmanov in round one. He didn't even have to take a shot, and he scored.
cautious game from both athletes. A lot on the line, a lot of tension in the air. You can feel it in the audience as well. Zach cannot make that same mistake again. Put himself down. Shakbanov trying to force the error with those feints though. Now one minute to points. This is a long time to be dancing around and fainting though. I really would like to see some real commitment from either guy here. You know, we're one minute 10 into the period. Yeah, you really can't call either of these guys for stalling. You have to call them both. Yeah. So might as well not call anybody. Yeah. Takes the shot. Oh, and look at this. Zach trying to move around to the back in reaction. Using the Kimura trap to That's turn. That's a good him. defense. That's a good defense right there. Classic Kimura trap versus single leg dilemma. Looked like he tried to come over. Oh, but he's lost it. And that's going to turn into two. That's going to turn into a score. I don't think it will. Yes, it's two. I think the three sec. Oh, it is. Yeah, you're right. I was going to say no because of the uh, time spent in the Kimura trap, but I guess that they considered it one very They considered long it the same movement. engagement. Yeah. And I think that was the right call. That's totally fair, yeah. Two to zero. Mm. Team Adolfo in serious danger right here. If you're Mo Jassim in the corner right now, how nervous do you feel? Very, very nervous. Active open guard here from Kainer. He had success with it in the uh, in the first round, getting into a, a, a decent attacking position, but converting that into points, especially two points. Here's that Joy Bar again. Rip just absolutely out. refusing to be controlled. <laughs> Heavy pressure, putting a lot of weight down, but kind of very flexible very dexterous with his legs. He's trying to make this K-guard entry, but Shotmanov now breaking the grips. Oh, and here's a nice entry, and Shotmanov out of there. Two to zero as we approach 90 seconds. It's so hard to hold on to these guys from those uh, leg entries. They really are, they're so quick to just bail completely, you know? they. They don't even want to risk a, a technical exchange. They just want to get the hell out of there. That was a pretty good off balance that time from Zach. Shakvanov regains his balance and base, though. Getting pretty aggressive with the hands and the, and the throat and underneath the jaw there. That's, that's their style, though. They're physical, right? They're physical grapplers. They're physical, and it's not against the rules. Absolutely you know, not. Like, as long as you're not squeezing the windpipe, you, it's all good. Posting with the web. And here's this. Choi bar injury. Okay, now that's the similar grip to what he was looking for when he went for the other plateau earlier. Yes, it is. Check out the face of Kaina. Choi believe the Banov is kind of wedging his knee behind the bottom leg of, uh, of Kaina there as well. But we're into that same play that ended round one. 35 seconds now. Zach should maybe think about off-balancing him to this back corner, back here over his right leg. Yeah, I actually see there's a number of members of the Modolfo team in his corner pointing, sweep that way, sweep that way. Yeah, I mean, he's got no base back here. He's got no way to create base back right. here. But and he tried it. He tried to use his shin to move his head. He's out of time. End of the match. Oh, sorry, end of the round, excuse me. One more, one more round to go. Tense, they, they exchanged tense looks there. When he tried to off-balance him towards that back corner, 
Zach raked his shin across the face and Shotmanov didn't appreciate it. He had something to say to him and Zach just stared him right back down. So it was uh, zero and then one penalty point in the first round. It was two zero in the second round. So that's two rounds that Shakhmanov is ahead here. So uh, and I think they need the submission in this last round to win the match. It's been exactly the strategy that we were talking about. The strategy that I, that I thought if they're going to beat Madolfo, it's going to be this way. They got to come out. They got to score early, use their wrestling to score early, and then survive the rest of the round. Hold that's exactly what mm. we're seeing play out. That spin to top from Shakhmanov was very, very quick. Looked in real trouble from that Kimura trap right there. Here's another look at it. Beautiful, aggressive grappling from Shakhmanov. Round three. Go. We're going to see the faint game again. Zach pulls guard early. He's going to take the negative early. He just wants to get started earlier. I mean, it's not the worst idea. At this point, the negative really doesn't matter, right? He's he's already lost the match on points. So one negative really makes no difference. He'll eat it just so he can get into this attacking position earlier, rather than in the last round, you know, spend nearly a minute thirty kind of dancing around and fainting is much better just to get hands on. Yeah, and he's got himself all the way into the closed guard this time. Ex well, with the that exception of that left knee slicing right up the middle. Zach looking to try to create an arm drag, but even if he was to get it, that knee through the middle is going to prevent his hips from moving away he wants. And it's, it's still possible to sweep somebody with a knee up the middle. Just... Yeah, you need him to, yeah. to make some mistakes, though. Yeah. You can see Zach, actually, he's trying to kind of twist his hips to the right and try and off-balance him, but But as long as easy. this posture is low, that's not, that's not going to happen. No, you need a high posture. You need him kind of backing away a little bit. He's looking right for it again. But, man, just stone base, like a tree down by the water, just shall not be moved. Boy, oh. Zach gets his fingers in the eye. Yeah, that was unfortunate. That was unfortunate. Yeah, I don't Zach, think it was Zach acknowledged it immediately. He's like, oh, my bad. The referee wants him to restart right away. Oh. oh. And Zach, yeah. <laughs> Zach's going to let you out. Okay, one to one. Yeah. Straight up palm struck him kind of immediately on the restart. Like I said before, you don't want to antagonize these guys really. <laughs> but I feel like I, I, I'm sensing a, a definite sort of shift in intensity now. Shakpanov, maybe an emotional guy, maybe didn't like that. And um, a little bit more intention. His grip's a little tighter, a little bit more handsy in the face, a little bit more active with his head in the jaw. But he's got this match in the back, you know, he's, he's got two rounds. And Zach's got a sub. And they call, oh, stalling call. The clock is on, 15 seconds. He's going to have to get active to prevent this stall. But, you know, to your point, doesn't matter. China doesn't matter if you lose, lose on points. points. Yeah. He's got the first two rounds in the bag. And they wave it off. They wave off the stall. Approaching the two minute mark now, and here comes the stalling clock again. When the referee makes that signal, that means turn on the 20 second, basically a 20 second shot clock. Like you gotta get a shot off. Should we call it the pass clock? Because <laughs> they only get, they nearly only get it when it's from the from the guard. Sometimes they'll give it from top position, but yeah, that, that's a penalty that's against be a uh, Shakhmanov. Doesn't really matter. He's just doing a phenomenal job of driving that knee up the middle. Now creating some strong head and arm pressure, but going to be hard to to break through the guard like that. And another stalling clock. Zach really finding uh, 
finding it hard going here, not having any real luck in uh, cracking those defenses, getting a grip of anything. Oh, trying to go for the legs, but once again, Shakhbanov is just up and out so quickly, but immediately back in. Zach checking the clock. He knows that he has to make something happen here. Shot Bonov one minute away from putting Universal up three to one against the All-Star Modolfo team. And now creating a passing opportunity. Less than a minute. A near pass. Oh, he does Almost got it. Zach manages to get his near side uh, knee back in, but yeah, Shakpanov is still putting on the pressure. Locks the hands around the body. That's essentially going to do the trick. He's not going to be able to break the grips. No here. way. Oh, and a buggy though from half. Probably not enough time though. But he's squeezing it hard. It's a That's pretty a good grip. grip. It's That's not so a bad. solid buggy right there, but five, four, three. Two, one, he's holding on. Match is over. Shot Bonov. Big win for Universal Fighters. Blowing kisses to the crowd. They are up three to one. And now he's firing the guns. Three to one for Universal Fighters. And the winner, the only Shabinov, off, Magomed. The only way that Adolfo can take this team versus team is to win the next three matches in a row. Insane. But I think that they've got their real big guns coming up in the next matches. You've got 91 kilos next, that's Giancarlo Bodoni versus Abdullayev Gatsumura. You've got 76 kilos, Kolobade versus Kaimazov Rashid. And then the final match, 70 kilograms for Bishu Andre versus Gaiabek Ibragimov. Listen, I gotta be honest, I feel like Universal still got their big hitters in front as well. That Cole versus Rashid matchup, that's not a that's not no, an automatic we, win for let's Cole. Let's take a look at this though, because this was the uh, the Oma Plata in round one. Uh, by far Zach's best look at a um, a real a real chance to end this match, but Shakbanov was just so strong. Look at that. So great awareness strong. too. He he kept himself out of the triangle and he stopped himself from either getting scored on or exposing the legs versus that Alma Plata. This was Zach had a trouble escape here. That was the second round from the early takedown. Zach scooped up the Kimura trap, but was unable to do anything with it. Another look at that. So quick on the spin. That's not sped up, that's real time right there. Super aggressive, super athletic. And it, you know what I love about these Universal guys? They oh. grapple violently. They really do. There's not bad intentions behind everything. Them. Yeah, not quite enough of a squeeze for the buggy right there. I mean, great, I think, great use of the buggy of, you know, that kind of new. It's, this is my last chance, and he went for it. He didn't just accept defeat, fight until the very end. But Shakbanov Magomed, so solid. Hey, that was a pretty tight buggy choke, if we're being honest. That, that wasn't something that he was going to be able to hang around in for very long. And slamming out of the submission would have been illegal. That would have been a DQ. Fighter 3, team off 0-1. The next match takes place at 91 kilograms. Representing Universal Fighters, Abdullayev, Gajimura. So Abdullayev, Gajimura, the returns. He, uh took a nasty heel hook from Kai Rudolph in his earlier match today. And he was helped off the mat. He was like, he was limping off. He was supported by his teammates. He's walking down the ramp. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with him right now, but. Could be just gamesmanship though. And big but. Giancarlo Bodoni about to make his way to the stage with a lot of pressure on his shoulders. And this is not the same thing as the pressure of an ADCC match where it's it's you're carrying the weight for yourself. He's carrying the weight of his team on his shoulders right now. And he's team captain, so all the responsibility is on him to get this done. 
but no stranger to big pressure and no stranger to rising to the occasion, the reigning ADCC champion, Giancarlo Badoni, enters the stage Round to try to keep his team alive. And Giancarlo can wrestle too. Make no mistake about it. He's not going to be a guy who just gives away a free to. He's looking to get low. He wants to wrestle though. Makes the contact, gets to his guard. And Giancarlo just basically a flawless technician when he's on the mats. So Abdullayev's going to need to have the match of his life to pull this one out for Universal. But we've seen a couple of these guys do exactly that so far. Giancarlo getting into his closed guard. Abdullayev trying to tie the biceps. Giancarlo with the cross frame on the far shoulder. Gets over to his side. Much stronger position here from the closed guard for Badoni. Yeah, I mean, he used the closed guard yesterday and uh, he popped the arm of his opponent, uh, Murad Ramazanov with a, an armbar and caused him to retire at the end of the round. The guy, the coaches and the, and the, and the team were like, no, you're done, guys, you, you, you're done. You know, the, he definitely ate a pop on that one. Giancarlo in his first match, he submitted Kamal Akagundas by submission in under three minutes of the very first round. Giancarlo trying to create an arm drag opportunity for himself. We're gonna get the stalling clock started against the man from Universal Fighters. Padoni high up to get the grip on the head. You remember that beautiful sumigeshi that he hit yesterday, the butterfly guard? Yeah, one of the coolest techniques of the entire day yesterday. Just huge elevation. And here and there it is again. again. Oh my God, he is so good at that. But he does not create the sweep though. He doesn't chase it because it wasn't Pointless. points period, so Oh, penalty against, uh, penalty against Abdullayev there. He busted the nose of Giancarlo. Yeah. Got some blood. Yeah, he got some blood coming. Maybe we, maybe we could get a replay and see what happened. Yeah, I couldn't quite see what happened in that exchange either. I was so focused on the sweep. Oh, yeah, that is flowing. Yeah, and you see Giancarlo signaling to the referee, said that he headbutted me twice. And I could see, actually, I looked over and even Dante Leon over in the corner was kind of saying something similar and certainly hope the nose is not broken. It's just a, uh, just a bump, but... Yeah, he got such elevation on that, uh, on that Sumigeshi, but he, uh, he, didn't, he didn't follow all the way through this time. We are going to get a replay. Great job in the production booth. Here's the elevation. And let's see where that headbutt occurs. It's got to be right here. There it is. Oh, man. But I would say that actually, I, I, and I'm pretty sure I saw faced. a little blood coming out of that actually prior to started that. trickling just before the headbutt. The headbutt was definitely, definitely happened. But I, I'd say whatever contact caused the bleeding possibly was prior to that. I think they're going to pen yeah, they do they penalize him for it. He takes he did a, penalty. Get a penalty. Yeah. He and did and that's consistent with what we saw yesterday with the um, I believe it was the the foot that that got caught there was a penalty. I can't remember exactly what the situation was. Yeah, you're looking over in the corner of Team Adolfo and uh Mo Jassim, ADCC head organizer is just uh it's pacing around. Here comes he's, that headbutt again. He's definitely nervous. What? I mean, that almost looked intentional. But Doni, though, just taking it all in stride. Yeah, not happy at all, but at the same time, the look on his face is one of determination. I think it's just given him even more motivation to take this guy out. Back 
Abdullah leading with the head again. Foot stuck. I mean, the head is a really useful tool. Oh, love the work there, the guard work of uh, Giancarlo Baldoni. And good and through, but... But the head is a useful weapon, it's a useful tool, right? You can use yeah, it to sure. post, you can use it to, to do many different things, to isolate limbs, to all sorts, but you start putting that in somebody's face and... Oh, nice There's sweep a sweep! Badoni's gonna score. Kind of like the flower sweep almost, and uh, Badoni on top now. 2-0. And look at the pressure. Yeah, wow. He, he's got him flattened out, and he's got two minutes to try to close the deal right here, and that would be huge. So he's got a near side underhook, the same side as the, as the half guard. Going all the way around over the top, Locks linking the his hands. hands together. That's, a, that's pretty significant. Yeah, he's got the instep pressed down in the half guard. Flat back half guard. I always say this is where good black belts go to die. Very strong near side underhook. This is a, such a good passing position. Gonna for play Bodoni. the lockdown though, and that could really put a stall on the passing of Madoni. Yeah, you can actually hear the the, the corner of, uh, of Universal Fighters celebrating because Abdulayev was able to to get that lockdown. But now we see Madoni. Kind of going over Tries the top. Tries to step over, but he saved it with that butterfly hook. No, he hasn't. He's knee cut to the opposite side. He's almost there down. He goes. Hips down to the mat. Three points. But Doni very comfortably in the lead now. Starting to trickle blood from the nose. He's thinking about the step triangle. over triangle. There it is. He's going high. You look He's going to get Brandon. it. This is the move right here. Can he maintain the, bro the broken posture, though? He's starting to slip his head out he just is. a little bit. That grip on the inside of the lock. But Tony, though, putting a squeeze down, oh, and he slips no, it. Out. All right, just over 30 seconds remaining, but Tony, he's uh, he definitely secured. Man, that blood is flowing from uh, from his nose. They're gonna, uh, they're gonna stop, address that. But that was such a measured, measured performance there from Bodoni. Sweep, pass, Submission attack, none of it rushed, none of it hurried. It was all just, no, 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 no. Just I'm going to slow precision. things down, do things my way. Exactly what Badoni is known for, just technical perfection. And technical perfection in a high-stress situation as well, which is even more impossible to pull off. Only the best of the best can do it, and that's why Badoni is the reigning champion. High up now, hand on the back of the head. And Bodoni's gonna walk out of round one with the 1 0 lead. He's going for the Choi Bar, and that's been the technique of choice today for a lot of these guys. We've seen it more than once. We've seen it lead to submission a couple of times already today. Bodoni takes round one. Big, big win in that round for for Team Madolfo. And I feel that Bodoni, if, if he was phased at all by the physicality, over let's now. say, that you know he's uh, he showed that hey, I, I can I can I can do things my way. I don't I don't worry too much about that. But Dante Dante Leon in the corner of Bodoni is saying the referee he's pissed because he considers that. There it is. He's, he's considered the uh, Universal Fighters guy to be a little too uh, assertive with his head. There Look was a at sweep. that sweep. You don't often see sweeps like that. You see Badoni create a lot of sweeps like that, though. He likes to grip, get those grips behind the tricep and just play with the momentum of his opponent. He just really allows the opponent to, to choose how he likes to be swept. Just perfect execution of the philosophy of jiu-jitsu. We gotta say this, that the rest period has just ended. Giancarlo Bodoni sprinted out of his corner a solid 15 seconds ago, ready to go, while the Universal Fighters, oh, Abdulayev, was still kind of, you know, being attended to by his coaches. Bodoni's, he doesn't always look it, you know, he's pretty stoic. Oh, especially in the face of those little pouring jabs. But uh, yeah, Bodoni is like, Man, he's ready to go. He wants to get this done. Donnie's and I think for the get team as much as anything. 
Absolutely. But Donny using that contact to get to his guard and now into the closed guard. Forearm driving across the face. But Donny probably going to try to create a back exposure here, though. He's got the underhook. Going to try to shuck that arm past the center line. Give him the back take slash arm lock threat. Donny creating some angle. That is great postural control. So that they're not allowing the face cover now, but that uh, wasn't a problem uh, earlier. Well, I, I think it depends which part of the face you're covering. If it's covering the mouth, then I think it's probably okay. But it looked like he was pretty high and maybe because fingers into were kind of eyes. getting into the eyes. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, that was happening in the Luke Griffith matchup. I mean, that was just part of the strategy. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Can he punch that got a little, through? Got a little greedy, though, I think, with that one. A little one. loose. And the platter's going to be hard. He's going to try to rip out of that. But Bodoni, I think, is going to use it to enter the legs. Abdullayev now has a negative. Bodoni's got an absolutely crazy schedule coming up as well. He's, he's competing... Uh, Again, in just a, a couple of weeks uh, in Florida at the Blue Collar Fighting Championships. That's like an eight man absolute GP. Yeah, and then he's coming out. Oh, the here's the, the leg exposure now. Ooh. Oh, but Donnie is not going to take off the hook. He's going to try to break it. Done. Over and done with. Smart. No need to really power through it. Abdullah knew it. Check me. Yeah, a smart play by Abdullah to get the early tap. No need to eat the pop on that one. The winner, Giancarlo Benoni. The score is now Universal Fighters 3, keep it up, though, 2. Yeah, I was just saying that, uh, you know, Giancarlo, he's competing again, blue-collar blue fighting championship in a couple of weeks, and then uh, just after that, he's in the Polaris Absolute GP as well, so... No conversation going on in the corner between the He's talking about the headbutt. The, and the, yeah, it's good sportsmanship though, you know, they, they, they're, they're settling it, and that's important. Mutual yeah. respect, very important in our, in our sport. Okay, yeah, that was Giancarlo a huge Bodoni win. Banged up, but he got it done, he got the submission win. Modolfo is going to be a little relieved now, they're not out of danger yet. No, it's not still, at all, they have to win every match they moving do. forward. They do, yeah. Modolfo is uh, currently one match down, three points, uh, three matches to two. And it's Cole Abade coming up next. But let's take a look at some of the best moments. This was the best moment of the match, other than the submission itself. That big off balance from Bodoni. There's the headbutt again. And look, <laughs> Bodoni just looks back to the ref. That was a beautiful sweep right there. That one scored as well. Very impressed by that sweep. This was beautiful work. Flattening them out in the half guard, using those underhooks, locking the hands, and then driving through. There's the inside heel hook. And Bodoni, very gentlemanly right there. He did not give any extra drive than was needed. Just, a, just enough pressure to create the tap. Clinical. And, you know, Abdullayev. To his credit, he didn't try to tough through it and force Bodoni to try to break him. Yeah, I, I don't think that'd be a good idea. Interesting grip there as well. He had the heel really deep. He didn't even have his hands clasped. No butterfly grip or anything, but yeah, that was a very physical, very tough match. I feel like that's the case, right? Even when you win by submission in a match against these guys, it's going to be such a physical, tough match, right? Absolutely. Up first, representing Universal Fighters. Kite Masov, Rashid. And here comes Rashid for Universal. And this guy looked like a tank the first time we saw him today. And he's gonna be a big test for the young black belt, Kola Bate. Probably gonna be the biggest test of the young black belt's career so far. Yeah, Rashid Kite Masov just looks Phenomenal in his earlier matches. So dynamic, great movements, really precise technique, and, and very, very physical. And an understanding of how to score and how to win. Yeah, yeah great strategy. Abate. A lot of 
pressures on the shoulder of this young man, Colabate, as he takes the mat for Team Modolfo with a lot on the line. All right, under 76 kilos, Kolobate against one. Kaitmazov Rashid. Kolobate's third ever black belt match. And he's gonna try to get contact and get to his guard quickly. Rashid gonna play on the outside and try to prevent that from happening. Gonna, I think he's gonna try to draw Cole into a into a penalty guard pull. Same thing that happened with Zach during his match. Cole gets on the front headlock, makes contact and gets to his guard. Smart, very, very smart. The only problem is now he's actually got to get hold of Kike Mazov and he proved a very elusive uh, kind of grappler earlier. Yeah, but he wasn't facing Cole Abate. Cole, one of the Honestly, one of the best guard players in our sport right now. Comes out of that AOJ camp and he is just so good at getting inside position and using that to invert, make moves towards the back, towards how the awesome legs. Is it, how awesome is it that Colabate, you know, we basically, he turned up at the ADCC trials in Atlantic City, East Coast trials and uh, swept the opposition in uh, winning every match but one by submission to, to qualify for world championships. And, you know, that was the first time we'd seen him compete no gi since he was like a little kid. And he really is just such a, such a phenomenal athlete, such a, a studious grappler, a student of the, of the Mendez brothers. It's been a pleasure to watch him mature over the years, but this is, this is a, a really interesting test for his no gi grappling skills because you really face opposition as tough, as durable, as, as difficult, as and technically as difficult unknown, as these guys. As unknown. Exactly. It's, it's a style that he's not used to seeing in jiu-jitsu competition. Whether, whether Kaik Mazov is or not, I don't know, but he could quite easily go out and find extensive footage, many, many matches of Kolobate all the way back, so he can figure out kind of what to expect. And listen, he's got five seconds left on this stall clock. Yeah. He's gonna have to do something. He's, he, they're gonna give him the penalty. And that's big for Abate. Cole is so good from the guard though. Just a classic reach back, bust that guard open. Oh, he was kind of looking for a possible false reap there for just a second. And I think that uh, Kite Mazov is going to have to be really careful where he, uh, where he steps if he's going to play that kind of uh, outside guard passing game. Cole wants to bring his guard high, but he's having a difficult, he's having a tough time holding on to Rashid. Very elusive. Very, very difficult to hold on to, for sure. It's been a recurring theme here that Ali only crew had exactly the same issue. They just could not get hold of the, the Universal Fighters or even the same with the team Nurmagomedov because you, you called it. They're, just the, they're so good with their hand fighting. It just, they just don't allow you to get grips. Oh, here goes a scoop grip from Cole. He's nice to come up tall. He's going to get two off of that. Oh, beautiful work, Kolobate. And powerful. Manhandling man Rashid. Throwing Kite Mazov back, and just landing in this kind of, kind of like a body lock. Now to him. Look at this like, pass. Oh, he's high. exposing the elbow. He's going to step around for the arm lock. Going high. Foot is all the way over into the hip. Oh, oh he, he, loses it. he missed he loses it. loses the elbow. But he stays on top, and I think that's clever. That's very, very clever. I'm not going to let him off the hook. No way. Oh, Falling Jordan back on the outside, he only got it! Gets a finish! Kolobate ties it up for Team Modolfo! Big win for the young black belt! Huge win for...
for Cole Abate. Cole Abate. Dominant technical Cole performance. Universal minus three. Keep it all three. Oh, yeah. Oh, it all comes down to this last one. The guard of Colabate getting him to the top position. Hopefully we can see that. Oh, there he goes. He drops back for it. Outside heel hook. Tight, tight heel hook. What do you think the way he said that up, Brandon? Man, it's very interesting because his, his left foot, his secondary leg, still on the outside here. You know, he didn't really have what you would call like a, a perfect leg position, but he had the exposure on the heel and he just decided, man, I'm gonna give it to him right here. Great bites with the grips, throws that leg up and over the top, doesn't even have to pass it all the way over. With score time, Team Universal Fighters 3, Team Adolfo 3, this seventh and final match will determine the winner between this duel. Coming up now is 70 kilograms, representing Universal Fighters, Guy Beck, Ibra Kimov. Well, Guy Beck is one of the most experienced members on the Universal Fighters team. And uh, Fabrizio Andre, his opponent, of course, uh, ADCC veteran and IBJJF Guy world champion. We got, we got two firecrackers on the, on the mats here for the very last match of the evening. And there is so much on the line. You can see the extreme, the, the intense conversation. I think the Universal Fighters guys, they know, hey, we need to get this done. There's that. And here comes Fabricio Andre. They call him the Hokage. The Hokage is the protector of the village. And how ironic that the protector of the village is sent out to win the final match for his team, but he has got his Round hands full right one. here. And even up, yay! Fabrice Andre, one of the most entertaining grapplers on the planet. Extremely dynamic, good wrestling, good guard, great triangle attacks. Let's see what strategy he likes to choose against Iblagimov. Will he pull just like his Modolfo teammates? I don't think so. I think he wants to try to wrestle a little bit just from the initial approach. Kind of looks like it. Well, he believes in his ability to score from the feet. When he comes out and he charges up and stomps that foot, it always makes the crowd pop. The Hokage knows how to put on a show. Andre riding him over to the edge of the mat, forcing the reset, trying to establish his dominance. Changes levels, looking for the ankle pick. He's gotta be careful going down to one knee like that. If you spend too long, if you go down to one knee, it's actually considered, in effect, the same as a guard pull, and you can be penalized for it. Yeah, if you drop into that kind of Nicky Rod position right. where he gets down Extremely to his low one shot, knee yeah. and stays there and looks which, for the opportunity. Which is actually kind of an effective attacking position. Oh, it's definitely wrestler, effective. But. Kage looking for the quick foot trip. He hit a beautiful foot trip from the rear body lock in his match. Which turned out to be the beginning of the end for his opponent. Yeah. Pretty good judo, actually. I've seen some footage of, uh, of him training in the gi in judo. He's, he's, got, he's got really good throws as well. We don't really see it in the no gi. Of course, it's different, completely different in terms of setups and handles. Two but on one, trying to use it to create a foot trip. Check out the grips. He forces him off the edge of the mat. I mean, you only need to look at Fabrice Andre to know that he's an extremely powerful grappler. His upper body is just, I mean, he looks like he's 220, you know, he's the size of his arms and his shoulders. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Of course, he's very compact. He's probably like 5'7", 5'8". But that, I'm sure those arms being the way that they are, that if he gets his mitts on you, imagine the grips. And we have just hit the points period now. Guy Beck's being cautious. I think this is interesting that he hasn't really, he hasn't set up anything. He hasn't, like his teammates, he hasn't come through in a Ooh, shot. Here he comes in on a single First though. one. Okage going to the Uchimata to counter. And another shot. Oh. Fabricio Andre moving to the back now, gets the exposure on the arm. He's, He's got, got the, the Kimura grip. grip. He's got the Kimura grip. 
Can he pop it out and seal this for Team Modolfo? His left leg is threaded through. If he can get his right leg out, you could even see him go for a triangle here. It's kind of crossed on the torso. And he's lost a little bit of contact. You see he's moving his hips around. He's trying to get that leg out, that's for sure. Two minutes to go in a very strong attacking position for Mauricio Andre. Guy back so calm. Look at that. Just so, so calm. Even look it up at the big screen to kind of check the time. Yeah, he feels like he has a good, safe grip on his own leg there on the inside. Can't quite see from this angle how, how good Fabricio's attack still is. He still got his hands locked. He still has the Kimura double wrist lock position locked together. He may be starting to lose a little bit of ground here. Okay, this is a little bit better. Yeah, he's still got a pretty solid grip of the arm. He's trying to turn it into this Choi bar now. Ibrahimov trying to survive, only one minute left. Switches it to Amapata and that gives Ibrahimov the ability to And he's got the single, driving against Hokage. Still working this single. Pushing into his butt, Hokage finds a way out of there. Does not concede the takedown, does not accept it. And you look it over the Madolfo team, they're celebrating that like he scored points. They're like, he can't take you down. Man, you could cut the tension in this room with a knife. Oh yeah, every single member of the Universal Fighters team is up on their feet. Every single member of the Modolfo team are on their feet. I'm on my feet. <laughs> A lot of the crowd are as well. There's, there's so much going on here. He's the shot on the single again. Good shot from Gaibet. <laughs> Off the mats. <laughs> <laughs> A big smile. Yeah. For this one, Jay laughs and smiles and Gaibet helps him back up. Love the sportsmanship. Intense battle, but still lots of respect. Yeah, I mean, he didn't throw him off the stage or anything. It wasn't like he was intentional. It was just a drive and trying to finish the position. Gaibek's getting a little more busy now, which I think is great, but there's like 10 seconds approximately left in this, in this match. Neither of these guys willing to lay down. Absolutely not. Oh, he's in on the single, then now into the time. around the waist. Ooh, right, his time expires. That's a draw. That was the best shot of the match so Round far. Round one is a draw. Intense, brother. Wow. Oh, guy back looks tired. Look at that. We talk so much about the post-match psychology. Guy back completely flat, massaging his arms and his legs. The team are going to work on him like a like a Formula One pit stop. You got everybody <laughs> out. Everybody takes a job. One guy on the towel, one guy in the water. But here's a replay of, of that early shot, and that was the way he he just locked up that Kimura grip. And check out the way he used that right foot as a pedal there against the hip. But this was a good play. Kaibet was so persistent. He was like a dog in a bone. But Fabrizio so Andre, so close right there. You just can't hold him down. Look at that. Great agility in being able to kind of kick away and spin in mid-air like that, square back up. He guy got, almost got him down. Man, he got both his Ooh. hips to the mat for just a split second. Round two, I think for Bruce Andre's having fun. There's a smile on his face, Brandon. You'll notice that when it, when Gaier Beck checks the head, when he posts on the front of the face, Fabricio comes up a little bit upright. And that may be the opportunity that he needs to create a big shot. And see, you see how he just comes upright just a little bit sometimes. We're gonna see him post the head. I think we're gonna see him post the head and try to create. Oh, oh nice good sweep. Beautifully timed there. Little Coochie Gary action. Oh. 
We got a match in our hands. Forty-five seconds to points. I love that Andre wanted to come out and wrestle with him, though. He's going to challenge him on his own turf. Test of strength here. Really is. Reminds me of Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan's <laughs> WrestleMania. There's that post on the front of the forehead again. Mauricio got to be very aware that he doesn't get too upright and allow a good, powerful shot. Hard collar tie. Points are active. And there's, there's, the there's the single leg. I think we're going to see Fabricio. Fabricio maybe try to work over to the Camorra. Oh! Gets to the back. Big left. Going for the mat return. Oh, and right on the edge of the mat here. Good rear body lock from Guy Beck. He's looking for hooks. What incredible balance and determination from Andre. Is he gonna roll through for the knee bar? He's looking for it. Great posture here from Fabrizio Andre, right in front of our commentary position, right on the edge of the mats. If they roll the wrong way, we may we may be dead. Uh, there is a roll. Fabrizio Andre tries to cut an angle. Good arm control by Guy Beck. Back on the hip. Just got the hook, he's got hook the first in. look. Near side hook is set. Has the bell on it. Andre with wrist oh, control. He uses it to break the grip. In. It takes and his own shot. Huge, huge. Foot sweep attempt and now. Full oh, triangle. He oh, falls into the triangle. Fabrice Andre went high off the wizard. Wrong side triangle here. Reverse triangle. Switching back to the other side. Oh my goodness, he's locking it in. It's getting close. He's going to want to clear this arm across to the other side. Guy has got the elbow tucked across the far side of the body. He's putting down on the head. There is not so much pressure on this, but it's still possible to finish it. For Bichon Drake controlling his own shin. They're right on the edge of the mat here. Literally off the edge of the They're going to try. Area. They don't want to take a risk of resetting this position. But that's extra time inside the triangle on that reset. Hokage oh, pulling down on the shin. He's got the shoulder still inside the lock. He wants to create an angle and lock this in a little deeper and remove the shoulder. But the risk of unlocking it is just too great with 40 seconds to go and so much on the line. Fabrizio Andre pulling down on the head. Big squeeze. The arm starting to come across now. Gaibex trying to posture up here. Right in front of us, once again off the edge of the mat, and this time Fabrizio Andre releases the triangle. 23 seconds to go, and they'll reset him inside the triangle with 23 seconds left in the round. Can the, Guy the, the Rodolfo crew he actually called him for a disqualification, saying that he was fleeing the area in the submission. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. They're going to reset it in the triangle. Yeah, they're going to restart it in the triangle. Fabrizio Andre saying no. 25 seconds left in the rounds. Oh, and this is not nearly as deep as the position that he has. Referees are actually going to go up and going to reset this. Well, you see, the difference here in the position is that Geiderbeck is trying to lock his arm underneath the leg, and that had already been cleared as they approached the edge of the mat. 
They're making that tight. Guybeck's really putting his uh, shoulder in deep, trying to uh, give as much space as possible. Very difficult, tricky restart. It's not really tricky, it's just tricky because the athletes don't want to give an inch. It's pretty clear what the position was. And they're just going to have to settle for this. That's what we're going to get. 25 Universal seconds Fighters left on the clock. Are absolutely pissed about this. They do not like the fact that their guy is being reset in a, even in a triangle, not fully locked on. Well, he's being reset into a position that's better than the one he had. It, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. If you feel sure Andre is not even trying to close it anymore, he's kind of just holding on. He knows that the round is done. He doesn't want to burn his legs out. All right, so second round ends 0-0. Zero, zero. Everything, everything comes down to this final five-minute round. It could not get more dramatic than this <laughs> round. I love it was happening right in our laps, too. <laughs> Insane. They're, uh, the pit crew are back in action again, working on Guy back. <laughs> Really is absolutely incredible the way you have the whole team there kind of working on him. You called it. They're running the pit crew over there. Let's see if we can get another good look at that entry. Yeah, off that overhook. There it is. Here it right is. Here. Oh, Just beautiful. Phenomenal. And the way that he actually kind of cleared the, the other hand as well before he kind of jumped. Really interesting. Here it is. Another look at it, Brandon. Look at that. Yeah, he used the grip of that guy Erbeck had on his hand against him. That lacing of the fingers was used against him to he set up the so trial. Calm. Look at this, between the rounds, he's so calm, whereas there is a palpable sense of urgency in the corner of the Universal Fighters. This, this, this is serious business. Wow. Guy Erbeck, he looks like he's hanging on by a thread. And listen to the crowd, everybody on their feet as we approach the concluding round of this evening, day two at AIGA Champions League, the defending champion, Universal Fighters, taking on the heavy favorites, Modolfo, and it's all down to this. Game seven, tied up, three to three, round three, no score on the board. Who's it gonna be, Howell? If I had the answers, I'd be a betting man. Oh! I'm not betting. Arm drag down Beautiful to the Beautiful arm mat. drag from Guy Beck. There's a shot. Good entry here. That is a good entry. Fabricio fighting with all his heart, staying out of the position now. Oh, and now he takes a shot of his own. Rejected by Ibr Gimov. It's love that Fabricio Andre takes a counter shot of his own. Neither guy willing to give an inch with so much on the line. You just can't. You just can't at this late stage with so much on the line. Who's going to initiate the next exchange? Will it be Guybeck or will Fabrizio Andre? We've got 45 seconds until points come into play. Of course, takedowns still score at this stage. Until the three minute mark, that's right. Yeah, a little call to action from the referee for both men here. Yeah, you can't really start the stalling clock on either guy because they're both doing the same thing as they approach the edge of the mat. Low posture now from both men, and they'll return to the center. Okage, grip on the back of the head. Continuously posting on the face. His guy at her back. He points. Here we go. Oh, Okage! Hits that magic stick, jumps over the shot! First look is in! Climb in the back! What a play by the Hokage! No hook, Makes the move into the crucifix! Fabrizio Andre looking for the arm. No hooks in. Kaibek's trying to turn, but Fabrice Andre really saw the grip. Oh! And Kaibek finds a way, grabs the single, now making a 
Fabrizio Andre back up to his feet, in danger of exposing his back here. Guy back hanging on for dear life. He's got those hands locked. I mean, he is in scoring position, but the heart of Fabrizio Andre just refusing to give up for his team. His hips now starting to slip. Hips on the mat, and he scrambles he's again, out. and he frees he's himself. Out. This is so dramatic. This has got to be the most fun match I've ever called in Gabriel my life. Sosa is losing his mind in the top corner of the screen right there. You can see in the corner. Listen to this crowd howl. I the Champions League. The crowd is on fire for this. Minute 20 to go. Neither man been able wow. to gain an inch on the other. The Universal Fighters cr crew are chanting Gaibek. The Kazakhs are chanting Fabrizio. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. One minute remaining, 60 seconds, and this match will be decided. It all comes down to this. Who will it be? There's the shot. He tried to hit that magic stick again, but he keeps the grip this time. Got it Runner for Fabrizio Andre to the edge of the mat. Moving to the back. Grip around the waist, and they're going to reset him in the middle. Will they reset him with that grip around the waist? Oh, yes. Fabrizio to try to run away, but Gaibek snagged an ankle, rode the motion, got that rear body lock. 39 seconds to go. Can Guy Irbeck find a way to dig this out for the defending champion? He only needs to put Fabrizio to Turtle to score. A takedown to Turtle will score under this rule set. 25 seconds now. He's got the knees pinched together. He will have an opportunity to check his base right here. Hokage releases his legs from that lock. Pulls him down to his knee. Five seconds to go. It all comes down to this. Here's the big play. Two, one, it is over. We will go to the judges. Zero, zero across Woo! all three rounds. What a performance from both men. Fabricio Andre, the Hokage. Gairbeck, Ibrahimov for Universal Fighters. Game seven, it all comes down to the judge's decision. What will it be? The judges discussing it right here beside us, Howell. We've got a decision, we're gonna find out. Somebody's hand is getting raised. They call him to the middle. Fighters, reigning champions, 2022 Aika champions. They come out and they take out the favorites, Modolfo team. Incredible. And that throws everything into just total chaos for who's going to be the second team now. We can't go off the air until we find out we who the second need to team find is. Out. We need to find out. Look at the replays of this. We've got the just Look that at beautiful that play. hop over the shot. Beautiful work there from Fabrizio Andre. Very sophisticated wrestling, but Guy Beck's persistence paid off. He just would not quit. He looked dead on his feet at times. He looked like he was going to collapse in the corner between rounds. But he came out and he got it done. His work rate, his persistence, his just his never-say-die attitude 
even in the face of Fabrizio Andre's counter-attacks, got him the nod from the judges. There's the final wrestling exchange, the catch in the ankle, following, uh, following him all the way to the edge of the mat. Final minute of a 15 minute match. Unbelievable. How, what a match. And just the emotion and the energy of the crowd. We still got to find out who's our winning team. It's going to be a tiebreaker. It's going to be a tiebreaker based lot of, on the criteria, which is we, we look at the number of individual wins, the number and then of submissions. the number of submissions is the second so criteria. Our officiating staff have to go off and do some uh, quick calculations before we find out who's actually won this and who's taking second place. And we're going to go to Hollywood Mike here in just a minute, and he's going to tell us what happened. What an event. And just look at the emotion from the Universal Fighters team. They're throwing Gaier back into the air. That's got to be one of the happiest moments of his life. Can you imagine that feeling?